All right, so I'm back to talk about the Voyager again. This is the part two. If you haven't seen the part one, I recommend you watch that video. Um, not only does that give the first three examples, which are the, probably the easiest for a layman to understand, but I also do a demonstration as to how the power supply works using a lighter and a multimeter, some very basic stuff that any person uh, should be able to see, understand, and even reproduce themselves. Now, uh, like I said before, I'm a mechanical electrical software materials manufacturing engineer. I also attend very many uh, government showcase meetings. So I understand exactly where and what they can and can't do because I see where they have problems and where they're looking for funding to try and spend more money to solve these issues and I know exactly what they can do. So let's go ahead and talk about, like first of all, understand that when I talk about NASA like this, I'm not attacking NASA as this whole corporation. You understand that when something is as big as NASA is, it's not one person or one entity being run the same way. There are very many different branches, different pieces of the industry, and understand that some areas are doing the most amazing work, the things that I actually love and I follow, but just like any big corporation, there's gonna be many people, and in, with many people, there's gonna be some that are corrupt. And so with these corrupt people, you know, you might have one or two areas where you have corruption, and the Voyager is one of them. So let's talk about this power supply. You may have heard people mention before that they are able to conserve power, right, by turning off devices when they're not being used. Understand that once you look at the last video, you understand that it works based off heat. It's called an RTG, right? A radio, uh, radio. Uh, I, it basically, it works off of radioactive decay. And then what they use is plutonium 238. And that's not as important for you guys. But just know that this thing, right? Like if you had it in your hand, it's very hot. Over time, it's going to cool down. It's going to be less hot. And it's the heat, like I showed you in the first video, that generates the power. So turning off devices, turning off things to conserve power doesn't make any sense at all because it's always going to be generating the heat. And since it's always generating the heat, it's always going to be generating the power, which means you should have all of your devices on all of the time because over time, you're going to be losing heat naturally. Like if you had a cup of coffee sitting on the table, it's hot. Over time, it's going to get cooler. And as it cools down, it's going to generate less power. You're going to be able to do less with it. And this is something that's posted. You can look it up and it'll tell you. It's decaying some amount of percentage per year. Understand that if you even, I'm not going to get into how you, this compares to the perseverance and the curiosity. I did that somewhat in the other one, but understand that now when we get into the discovery, what the discovery actually was, first of all, they'll call it a firewall because they're trying to get the attention of laymen to scare you. Understand that it's a wall of plasma. Plasma is different because, you know, fire requires a, a fuel source, right? Whether or not it be actually gasoline or wood or whatnot. It also requires oxygen, right? You know that fire needs oxygen because you can literally put a, you know, like a plate on top of a candle and watch it go out when it has no oxygen. So it's plasma, plasma like the sun. Now to get plasma, you actually need to have an immense amount of pressure. Something like the gravitational force from a star, right? The, the mass pulling in all that gravity, that creates one, a firewall. That would create this plasma, right? They call it a firewall. Or you can get it from, sorry, you can get it from actually velocity pressure. Velocity pressure is like when you're driving your car, you stick your hand out the window and you can feel particles hitting your hand. And as you move faster, it moves, it gives you more pressure, right? So if you're driving at 25 miles an hour, you stick your hand out, you're going to feel like, you know, nothing much. But if you're driving 75 miles an hour, you can feel it a lot more. And it, and it goes up with, uh, it goes up with speed, obviously, but not directly linear. It's quadratic. Now, this is what causes plasma on spaceships. This is why the starship has to do the belly flop maneuver to slow itself down because if it's moving too fast, it'll create too much pressure. As it creates too much pressure, it'll start to create this really, really hot plasma. So there's no way that you could have this full surrounding plasma wall that they call it, like maybe right in front of us. But even then, that would require there to be a hard surface. Because there's the space of vacu the vacuum of space, sorry, and there's a very little bit of particles, which is not a perfect vacuum, understand that there are particles in space no matter how far or where you go, there's always going to be a decent amount of particles with relation to the size of an object. But if there's a firewall in front of us, that means there's a lot of pressure in front of us. That means that there would be a high density of particles there, meaning that the Voyager wouldn't even be able to travel through that. But then the only other option is that behind us, right? Now behind us, like if we're moving forward, like I said, the velocity pressure, there's going to be pressure on the front of your hand, right? But there's not going to be pressure on the back of your hand. So if we're moving, then that's going to be one thing. The only other option to, to make a firewall that encased us would be literally if our entire uh, solar system was basically this massive thing itself. And then that would mean that all of the vacuum of space wouldn't make any sense either because that would require very high density, right? And so either, like I said, you have the velocity pressure, which would make plasma, 
like what we see on you know spaceships. When they come in too fast, they burn up just like how meteors come in too fast and they burn up. The only other option is that you have a large amount of mass yourself and you're very high density like a star. And so then now your own gravitational pull is what creates this plasma from the gra from basically crushing the particles. And that's what it is basically, right? When you're moving really fast, the particles are hitting your hand and they're starting to like crush and then they're starting to compress. Or you have your own gravity which pulls things in and then that creates compression. But there's no way to create a firewall around our entire solar system unless, there's no way to do it. I'm sorry, not unless. With the information that's been provided, there's no way to actually have that. And so why are they talking about this? It's a propaganda situation where they're literally trying to create fear because they work with other industries and companies. They work with other industries and companies that can feed off of this fear when they try and make us feel as if we are this isolated, you know, uh, this isolated situation on Earth. And you understand that when you look at the picture, which I described in my previous video that you should take a look at, but when you look at the fact that they, tr they, they get off on fear because the media and other people, that's how they make money. And certain businesses are only about making money. Most businesses care about, I mean, like if they care about money more than they care about anything else. And if they can partner up with another company and help produce fear in a certain way that'll get them more clicks, more views, then they can use these more clicks, these more views to increase ad revenue. That's how kind of, I mean, like that's how YouTube works, but YouTube does it in a good way where like it's just content created for people. And if you get enough views, then you can start making money off the ad revenue. And so what they do is they try and post these scary situations like, oh, there's this scary, scary discovery firewall. And then they're like, now we're going to get clicks, we're going to get views. And because we get clicks and get views, that's going to produce ad revenue and we need money or they want money. To understand that what they're talking about makes zero sense. You can't save power by just turning off devices when you're using an RTG because an RTG is based on heat. And just like a coffee cup, the heat is there when it's there and it's not when it's not. It's always generating the power. It's not like a battery in a TV remote where you can save it by not using it or in your car. Like it, You have to use it when you have it because it's always going to be there until it's not, right? And then the idea that there's this firewall, a firewall, like it just didn't even make any sense on any scale. You can't get it from pressure and you can't get it from having massive gravity. And so it doesn't exist. It's just to create fear so that way they can get attention so that way, once they get that attention, they can turn that attention into revenue through advertisement. And that's, that's all it is. If you have any questions, please post them, right? On my last video, I got attacked by very many people. And you'll understand that when I got attacked, most of it was by laymen. There was one person who had an engineering background who attacked me. We went back and forth, back and forth. And after a while, you'll see, I think his name, it was Oh Ancient Ones or something like that, deleted most of their comments, leaving my comments behind because either he recognized that my arguments were good enough to, you know, to stop his argument or he did some research. But so far I understand that what I'm saying is, is the facts as far as I can see them, it's the facts as far as anyone has been able to produce them for me. And I, I, I'm experienced enough to know this because like I said, I'm an engineer. When you talk to these people who give you this background, this information, most of them are physics people. And physics people, physicians, they don't, are not physicians, but phys people who deal in physics, physicists, they don't actually know how to develop these tools. They don't know how it works. The idea that there would be a firewall would also contradict the idea of the cosmic radiation background, the idea that most of the space around us is cold because either one, you have a hot firewall right here and then all the space out here is cold, which means that when you try and measure the temperature, you're only going to get that hot temperature, which means that the rest of the space would be hot from their perspective, or you would have this cold here, and then you'd have the heat outside that, and that would still show you that they don't know how to measure the temperature because they don't actually know how to design the machines that measure temperature. They only know how to use them. So please ask questions, and I will follow up with another video. If you're on here to attack me because you love NASA and you think that I'm just trying to hurt or tear this down or whatever, it's not the case. Someone else, thought that I was just really religious and that I'm just some God person. Like, I have no problem with religion, but I'm not a religious person, right? I'm actually an atheist, right? And so I know that might offend some people, but understand that I have no problem if you believe in a God. But understand that from my perspective, God didn't create things like this, right? Like if there was a God, if there was some situation, it follows just like they're, they're on the same platform. I mentioned a video too, where I literally said that the whole creationist versus evolution argument is silly because we're not smart enough to really know the truth. 
and God versus evolution, they both have the same goal, and that's the survival of the human race. That's for us to, to, to reproduce and to, and to basically continue out into the stars. Like I said, this video is running on now. I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. If you have any questions, please ask. I'm sorry if the video wasn't as good as my previous ones. I'm not feeling as well today, but I still felt the need to push this information because I don't like when I see the propaganda that's being generated to create fear. Fear just so that way people can have power, and with that power, they just use it to create more fear so that way they can make more money so that way they can keep this cycle going where they just steal money from people using fear to do so. So have a good day.